Hey guys, I'm going to do a little how-to here today for you. Um, Honda related, so I'll make you Honda guys happy. One of the issues that I've come across a lot in the last few years with Hondas is uh, various problems with what we call either the, the uh, ignition control module or the igniter. It's the same box. Um, this is inside the distributor and this is the reason why probably a good 75% of you actually just go buy a distributor when all you need is to replace the control module igniter. There's really only two primary components that go bad in the distributor, one being this and the second being the coil. Um, there is a pickup and there are some seals. If the seals go bad, you find oil getting into your distributor and getting thrown around um, you know, from inside the valve cover where the distributor plugs in. There is a seal there and if the seal goes bad, oil can get into your distributor and cause havoc as well. But if that's not the case, and uh, the pickup usually never goes bad. It usually comes down to the coil or the igniter or ignition control module. One thing I found interesting about these little suckers, it's just a small little device that has a few different connections on it. The thing is, is when you go to the auto parts store and you ask for one of these for a particular make or model of Honda or Acura, most of the time they'll tell you, oh, we don't have it or it's very expensive. But yeah, if you look it up for a different Honda, they have it and it's cheaper. I don't know why Honda does this, but to date, me and my buddies have found that just about every single distributor we've taken apart for a B-series or a single cam, it doesn't matter. It's the same piece inside. Even though the part stores and Honda give them a different part number, they all work. VTEC, non-VTEC, we haven't found a difference yet. Um, and if we do, we'll let you know. This one's actually out of a single cam, and the problem we're having in my um, in my Integra is since the day I bought this thing, the tachometer will work fine until about 6,000 RPM, 58, 59, 6,000 RPM. Once it gets there, the needle just goes and just kind of funks up. Thought it might be the tack, um, so I put a shift light in in another tech episode for our other channel, CNC Customs. And um, the shift light does the same thing. So it's more than likely this little device, the igniter slash ignition control module. Um, we've also found weird things with this, like if you go to the Honda dealership, and you say, hey, I need a valve cover gasket for my B18 GSR. They'll tell you, oh, we don't have that. We can't, we don't, that's, that's Acura. You gotta go to Acura. They don't need, they're not even smart enough to realize that the Civic Si B16 is the same gasket set for just about the whole motor. <laughs> so little things like this pet peeve me. But today I'm going to show you how to change this. So um, get the camera here. And the first thing is it's inside the distributor. You do not have to remove the distributor. It's easier if you do, but you don't have to. Uh, I'll probably pop the top of this air filter box off just to get a little more room in there. The first step is just to go ahead and remove the cover. And once we have the cover off, we'll pick up from there. Okay, so to get the cover off, this was just a simple Phillips head. So is this, or you can use a, a socket. It's just three screws holding one. Now the trick to getting the rotor off, a lot of times there's a, slot, there's a spot over here, hard for you to see without the light, right in there. Uh, that sometimes you have to turn the motor to get it to line up. You have to have somebody bump the motor over, or uh, what I can do, what I often do, is just put it in like third gear, emergency brake off, and I'll just rock, move the car back and forth until this will spin with the car. Um, till you have either the Allen or the little bolt or Phillips head that's facing right here, so you can take and loosen it. This one happens to have, however, one of these gay replacement ones that just slides on, slaps off with kind of like a tensioner thing in there. It doesn't even go into the into the hole with a bolt or a screw. So you take that off. This plastic cover will then pop right off. And now we can start getting in here to the meats and guts of it. And right there is our little ignition control module. That little box right there. Um, to get him out, it's a simple matter. I'm trying to turn here, show you guys. Of two screws right here. One and two. You take those two off and you undo these 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 uh, spade terminals or do they just pop right off? You can slide your ignition control module right out and uh, we'll pick up with putting the new one in. 
So here we have the two modules. As you see, other than having a slight color change, they're the exact same shape. Everything else appears to be the exact same. The one says Hitachi E12-303. The other one says Hitachi E12-302. Now, I don't know that that means there's any differences as far as how these work, but like I said, we have not found a difference. We've put these throughout all different cars, my Turbo Civics, uh, swap them around, and so far not a problem. One thing I did notice is that a couple of the spade terminals could be pinched closed a little bit more. Take a pair of pliers and pinch them just a little tighter. They were pretty sloppy fitting, and a sloppy fit can also cause some issues. So uh, I'll pick up the video with reinstalling. It's just the opposite. We slide the new one in, put the terminals all on, put the two screws back in, put the black cover back over, rotor back on, cap back on, and we uh, fire it up and test and see if the problem is now gone. Okay, so I'm just reversing the procedure. Module back in, wires all put back on it, black, black plastic cap stuck back over everything and uh, that clicks in a couple spots just to make sure it fits in there nice and snug like I said this one's the gay slip on style somebody's done a tune up on this in the past simply got to get the flat spot to line up on the flat spot which is right around Take the wire out of me right around here right there clicked in Put the cap back on and tighten down the three screws on the cap. Replace the air filter box right here and then we'll be firing up and checking to see if the uh, tack issue is fixed. Okay guys, so it's back together and uh, I haven't started it yet. I'm going to fire it up. I usually don't like to rev stuff when they're cold. Uh, this hasn't been ran very long so probably what we'll do is we'll run, run it just for a few minutes. Because it didn't used to uh, go wonky until about six grand, and I clearly don't want to rev the motor that high when it's cold. So I'll start it up here, let the temperature come up just a little bit, get the oil flowing, and then we'll try to rev her and we'll see what happens. So we'll pick up with that. Okay, so we left her warm up a little bit, the idle came down, and um, now if you didn't hear him see the tachometer with the view. What used to happen, and what you may be experiencing, is when the tack gets up in the upper RPM somewhere, the tack needle just start to do this and just jump all over. It wouldn't stay smooth all the way up through. And of course, since the shift light was getting the signal from the same place the tack was, i.e. the distributor, um, we were having the same issue with that. So, um, now what I'll do is I'll rev it, and we'll see if around six grand, the tack needle just starts to go everywhere, or if it actually just fl fluently goes like it should. And as you see, we're clearly fixed. That was a nice clean sweep. Worked flawlessly and the shift light came on when it was supposed to. It's set at six grand right now. Uh, we'll adjust that for uh, ideal conditions at the track. But um, jumping tack or any other issues like that, you don't need a new distributor every time. Usually it's that you have a coil. Well, here's the thing about a coil. And I don't want you to think, oh, I got a problem, I should replace my coil. Coils usually either work or they don't. So no spark, no start situation could be coil or ignition control module, but tack issues or funkiness like that, intermediate problems, usually the module or the igniter they call it. All right guys, take care.